Hey y'all, today we have a first time guest from uh, Reading, Pennsylvania. It's uh, Dan Newby uh, from Wager Talk and he's from 8.33 or 8.30 a.m. Is that right? Yeah, so the uh, the radio days are starting to go behind me, Matt. So I still, I do a little play-by-play for him every now and then for local sports, whatnot. But, uh, but yeah, 8.30 a.m. on the radio dial is where you could catch me. But uh, I, I got to leave that, I got to leave that all behind, man. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll have to get into you with the, uh, about that all, all fair, of course. We came to talk about the birds. Uh, <laughs> well, before we get into the birds, uh, Steelers last night on Sunday uh, timestamp, obviously, by me saying that for the people, but on Sunday night football, pull out their sixth win in the last eight games after they left Lincoln Financial Field on October 30th. They have now rattled off six wins in their last eight games with uh, Kenny Pickett. What are you thinking? I mean, what what's going on? It, it, Mike Tomlin is always somehow able to, to squeeze every drop of talent out of his team. It's amazing. Dude, that's what I don't understand because so I'm a birds fan through and through, but being from Pennsylvania, half of my uh half of my family lives on the other side of the state. Same. And they're all steelered up, man. And I don't understand how they ever have one complaint about Mike Tomlin. You could do so much worse than Mike Tomlin, Mr. Never Been Below 500 as your head coach. I mean, what he's done in his tenure, I would argue, is one of the most impressive runs we've seen in NFL history. Despite if he has Duck Hodges playing quarterback for him, he's able to squeeze out energy from his teams like he's wringing out a towel. Um, yeah. I also think a lot of this emergence, man, just has to do with Pickett coming into his own. And, and I think part of Pickett coming into his own had to deal with him really realizing, ah, I'll just throw it downfield because Pickens going to be open down there somewhere. Yep. Like this Pickett yep. to Pickens connection is going to be so fun as long as you're not a Ravens, a Bengals, a, 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 a uh, you know, AFC foe. Um, as long as you're not a fan of them, that's that's a connection that has just been terrific, man. And I, I, I it's impressed me what they've been able to put together um, despite everything telling them it's going the other way. I think a lot of that has to do with Watt coming back defensively too. What an incredible player he is. So you're. So it sounds like you're saying that you think uh, Pick uh, Pickett has proven he's the guy. He's the next. He's the next franchise quarterback for that team. Now, sounds like. Now, that uh, sounds like you're saying. Now, now here's the thing, Matt. Whenever you use the phrase "the guy," there's a lot of consternation that comes around a phrase like that. Like, like there, there are like tears of guys. I don't know if I'm <laughs> ready to say that Pickett is like a Josh Allen guy, but I yeah. am ready to say that um, he. He's done a lot to dispel what the naysayers have kind of said coming out of the draft. You know, big game guy. We haven't really seen much out of him. Um, you know, the the ever elusive hand size. Is he going oh, to be able to grip? Oh, that was the grip? dumbest thing I've ever heard. That was just it's, the worst football analysis. I, I just couldn't believe that was really a thing. It's, I, but it is a thing. Like, dude, like the fact that we need to measure guys' hands to be like, this guy just can't do it in the NFL. You know, it's absurd. Like, can the guy slang it? That's all I care about. But people people are getting out the protractor and being like, what's their, what's their grip strength? It, it absolutely is absurd. So I think he's done a lot to, to push back against a lot of the detractors from Kenny Pickett. Do I think he's going to be a Hall of Fame quarterback? No, but I think at least heading into this next season – very far down on the list is what are we going to do under center is uh, is 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 on the list for uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers for sure. Definitely stabilizes the room because uh, yeah, Ben in the last couple of years I know and Steelers fans were probably really excited about our conversation so far, but Ben was just bad. Like let, let let's not lie about it. He was a bad NFL quarterback. He wasn't. He looked. He didn't look as bad as Gardner Minshew looked yesterday, but he wasn't much better than what Minshew was giving us yesterday. <laughs> No, Ben Roethlisberger towards the end of his career looked like what people thought he was going to look like after he flew off of his motorcycle, right? Like he, right. he looked like a guy who was who was struggling a little bit, but um, but that happens so much with these quarterbacks towards the end of their career. Like, still, okay, the Bucks are still winning, but the greatest quarterback of all time, Tom Brady, even seems like if it weren't for still having a good kicker, still having refs that like to throw some flags his way, and still had some top flight wide receivers, like. Even he's running out of steam. Think about Peyton Manning's last year. So Ben Roethlisberger, just a long list of guys who stuck around longer than they probably should have. So it's fun to have a a young bull in town to get excited about. Absolutely. 
if you had to give your the lion share of the blame to the bird, mm. let's just get into the birds. Yeah, Yesterday, yeah. You got to pick about one. Steelers for too long, Matt. I don't know why we <laughs> led with that. No, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> so, if you had to give the lion share to 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 one to one person, obviously, you know, it's a team sport. Let's remind everybody, it is mm-hmm. a team sport. But if you had to pick one, are you picking Steichen? Is it Gannon? Is it Minshew? Is it just the the team isn't so, that good without Hurts, or is it somebody else? What what sticks out most to you as like the reason the birds lost yesterday? Man, I think you did a great job setting that one up because you listed so many different options, and my answer is yes. That my answer is yeah. All of them deserve <laughs> some of the blame, man. I mean, bad call play calling the past couple weeks. Um, head scratching personnel decisions. Um, you know, abhorrent quarterback play yesterday you know what I mean like you you said uh you know he kind of looked like how how Ben Roethlisberger was looking vice versa I mean Minshew just the two-week flip from him looking capable as hell against Dallas who I would argue despite the emergence of the Saints defense or re-emergence I guess I should say still Dallas is is top up there at least top 10 with what we've seen probably scratching top five as far as defense play and Minshew wasn't the reason they lost that game against the Cowboys. No. It was, um, you know, personnel decisions. It was bad mistakes. It was bad turnovers. I mean, the picks that Minshew threw against the Cowboys were not the ones he was throwing as he was playing the Saints yesterday. And I think the big thing for me, yes, I want to blame the coaches, but still the execution has been awful, especially on the defensive side of the ball because they're generating pressure up front. I mean, this is this Eagles team has now set history as the first team in NFL history to have four different players with 10 or more sacks. And they're potentially, you know, if they get five sacks this week, they would be tied with the 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 prolific pass rushers of the Bears and teams like that on just all time pressure rate. But the back end, dude, I don't know when you're watching these games. <laughs> Where's Darius Slay? Like, does that have to do with the fact that Gardner Johnson isn't over the top happen- helping him out? Like, Bradbury, who he was ball hawking early on in the year, like, there has just been a stark regression. And I think you can't really point much blame to what's happening up front because they're still generating pressure. They just can't get stops on, what, third and 30, Matt? I mean, come on, man. So what, when you're watching these games, what are you seeing? Because it seems like to me the back end, I don't know if it's because they play so soft, um, because of what you know Gannon is calling, or if just the execution is lacking. It could be a combo of both. What do you think? I, You know, it, it's such an interesting discussion. If I got to pick one, yes is a good answer, but – I think if you could change one, <laughs> Gannon, Gannon, just for me, he has great results. So it's hard to have, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, people who want to defend him can always say, oh, yeah, but look, he, Point to he the gave stats, up only yeah. 13 points. He's yep. a top, you know, look at all the pressure they're generating. Yes. But at the same time, sometimes some of the play calls are just too cute. It's just it's just always trying to thread the needle sometimes when you don't need to do that. Sometimes he plays vanilla when it, it doesn't call for it. And sometimes he's getting really exotic on a third and third. Why are we playing cover two? We end, yeah. it ended up it like half of the week last week to to realize that that's what happened. It wasn't Slay getting cooked, in my opinion. Uh, but why are we playing cover two in a third and 30? <laughs> Dude, and that's that's the thing, and I feel like it has continued to plague us since we lost our guy, uh, our, 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 uh, our guy Jimmy J, because like, dude, but right before this, this is the same conversation we were having with Jim Schwartz, wasn't it? Like, yeah. why do we do bump and run coverage, and then when it's when it, when it's you know third and thirty, we play stick coverage and give up, and then we're not able to tackle. So it's like I don't know why our defensive coordinators can't just find a philosophy, stick to it. I mean, look at what D'Amico Ryans and the 49ers are able to do. Like they know here is what we run and here is what we run. Well, they don't get cute. They don't try and zhuzh it up. They don't try and, um, you know, try and make, try and be squaring these like circle pegs into, into square holes. It's just, I share those same kind of frustrations. I am kind of one of those Gannon truthers where you say, well, look, they only gave up X amount, but at the end of the day, the proof is in the pudding. And when you're not able to beat a pedestrian Saints team and you only have four incomplete passes for Andy Dalton. I mean, Andy Dalton looked like primetime Tom Brady yesterday, Matt. So um, I, I 
it, it gives less and less ammo for me to spray back at Cannon <laughs> haters when you have these results week after week where it's like, what are you doing, bro? And and then you have and then you have Taysom Hill coming in the game. And I'm oh. sorry, Taysom Hill's gonna have to beat me with his arm. I'm sorry. If he get if he burns there, if one of their guys burns Darius Slay deep, then that's okay. But I'm I can gonna live with that. Nine I in can the live box. with that. <laughs> nine in the box. You bring Taysom Hill. If he's in the backfield, I'm putting nine in the box, period. <laughs> Absolutely. I have to know. No, no I, I'll put them all in, bro. I'll go engage eight. You know what? I'm going to go mad and change it up. I'm going to go punt block, send everybody up to the line. Like he's going one to, guy to back. beat me. Yeah, one guy back to save it because it, there ain't no way Taysom Hill's getting out of that. Now, I will say, um, you know, before we start kind of looking forward to this week here, um, we did do a lot of talk about, you know, hey, where are the blames going? Where is this going? Um, and we haven't really talked about something that I kind of feared. And that was just the, the the regression to the mean that we've seen with this Eagles team. And when I talk about that, I'm talking about injuries and turnovers. Because right. a lot of people and a lot of people whose opinions I respect, they view injuries and turnovers as, as almost uh, a random Inevitable. stat. You know what I mean? Yeah. So after the Eagles get through the start of the season, what, they're 8-0, during that span, they just give the ball away three times. Like, I feel like all of us who know ball, like you, Matt, like any of us who yeah. are watching these games week in and week out, like we knew that number wasn't going to hold, right? The fewest no. in NFL history through eight games. So I thought we would see some regression in the mean. Not all the balls have really been bouncing our way. You know, a la, uh, what was it? Miles Sanders, who fumbles, right. that fumble, the biggest fumble in the Cowboys game. That was his first all season. So That's right. that and injuries, I feel like has to do a lot with what we've seen down the stretch here for the Eagles. But still, they're sitting here with a game coming up in week 18 where all you have to do is beat a Giants team and you can still get the one seed. They can somehow get out of the mess they put themselves in. And hopefully we get to see Jalen Hurts back behind center because – if it's Minshew, phew, I don't know if they're beating Mary's sister of the poor if he plays the way that he played yesterday, man. Good God. It was awful. It, it was, it was, it was, that was some of the worst quarterback play I've watched from the Eagles since the 90s. That's what I'm saying. Like, bro, I was watching that. Like, <laughs> can we get Coy Detmer on hold? Like, can we, can we pull up the ghost of Kevin Cobb who, who still has a chunk Seriously? of grass from that Green Bay game? It was that bad, bro. I, I, Mark I, I was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, give me a little Sanchez. You know, he can come in. I was literally like, man, I know Ian Book couldn't even throw the ball downfield at Notre Dame, but like, could it be the worst thing in the world to see Ian Book in this game? I, I was floored with the poor play from Minshew. And I feel like to go back to that question, I think that had to be the top of the list for me was when Minshew can't hit water falling out of a boat. When he can't throw more than 15 yards downfield, you're not going to win games, even with A.J. Brown, even with Devontae Smith putting highlight reels out there every time they're on the field. That was just – that was abhorrent, to say the least. And 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 before – you know, I don't want to just spend the whole time beating up on Mr. Minshew, so I'll just – I do have I do to – I do like Minshew. Cover this. I do like, like – yes. like, off the field, I'm like, bro, I would die for this guy. On the yeah. field yesterday, he made me want to die. That's right. But his answer about the pick six play where he oh. said that they, we ran the same play, the, the answer was worse than the offense. <laughs> just, say, just say I messed up. Like, just, just say, yeah, like, like, like the answer made me even more mad. Like, I, I just accepted it. I was like, all right, the NFL got what they want. Now it's week 18, everyone. That's and right. then I heard Minshew speak, and I was just like, now I'm fuming again. Now I need to take a walk around the block because I'm shook it. It, did you see the pictures of AJ Brown after the game yesterday? Oh, he was he, he was yeah. throwing everybody under the bus, man. Anybody <laughs> could get it when AJ Brown was talking yesterday. He threw he grabbed Minshew and he was just like, yeah, right under the bus, man. And I can't really blame him, but that worries me a little bit too. Is like it does. are the wheels it falling does. off? Like, you know what I mean? Are people starting to point fingers around? And maybe the cure all is getting the would be MVP if he didn't get injured and Jalen Hurts back slinging the rock. If he if he comes back and they win the game this week, though, he definitely wins MVP. It's crazy that he can lock it up. If he comes out and throws for 300, runs for 75, the game is somewhat close for most of it, and then they win, and then they get the number one seed. And Minshew just had a stinker 
and a good point. There were a, there were a lot of missed throws in the Cowboys. He wasn't the reason. Minshew wasn't the reason that they lost the Cowboys game, but he had he was some a big missed one. throws. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. He wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't <laughs> the reason. You know, he's not the one who gets the ball stripped away from him like Quez Watkins. Um, you know, he right. was putting the ball where it needed to be, but uh, four turnovers would be at the top of that one. But I think that's a good point you made. I wasn't even really thinking about that because I figured once Hertz went out, the MVP race is done. But, um, you know, a performance like you have yesterday, that may have strengthened his case even more yes. than a good game, <laughs> saying, oh, yeah, maybe it wasn't him being a system quarterback after all. It's amazing. You Do you think that – what do you think? And you, are the Giants going to try to press the flesh on this game? Are they going to try to play their players and, and, and risk the injury to stay hot, stay warm going into the playoffs and try to uh, deprive the Eagles of the one seed? Yeah, so here's the thing as I'm looking at this game, um, and a lot of what I do is, you know, I'm obviously watching all these games. I played football, played college football, so I know the sport like the back of my hand. I was actually just joking Ooh. with my friends. I was like, I wish, you know how when you get the screen time report on your phone and it's like, yes. man, you, you've been looking at your phone for 10 hours every day. You yes. have a problem. Yes. I wish yes. that I could get a screen time report like at the end of my life when I end up at the pearly gates, hopefully. Yes. And like, yes. they, they just like open up a book and they're like, you watched football for 17 years of your life. Yes. Because like, that's how much I'm watching the sport. But I also like looking at things through a betting lens because yes. I know the X's and O's and I think you can learn a lot just breaking it down into the numbers and into the betting markets and what people who are putting their hard-earned money and do this professionally where they think it's going to go and the odds makers with the information that they're privy to that maybe the public isn't as well. So the fact that this line looking ahead would have had the Eagles as one and a half point favorites in a must win game for both of these teams. So it was a very tight line. And then the game opens after giants clinch the playoffs after the Eagles are now in, you know, a win and you get the one seed situation 13 and a half. The Ooh. Eagles are favorites. So Ooh. even if it was, you know, Oh, the giants are resting there. That line alone tells me, we the odds makers believe Jalen Hurts is going to be in this game, number one. And number two, whether the Giants aren't resting their starters, the Giants aren't going to play their starters the entire game. Now, if I were Dable, I wouldn't play him at all in the game because yeah. just like you said there astutely, Matt, you get one injury, and this is now the first time you're in the playoffs again for how long? What, since they were on the boat wearing Tim's, right? Like, yeah. it's, it's been a while for this Giants yeah. team, and now you – injure Saquon Barkley or you um or you injure Daniel Jones again I don't want that to happen I don't want to see that you know I'm not advocating that at all but it's the reality when players step on the field you can potentially get hurt I think they would be very foolish to play any of their key players in this game because all it takes is one little misstep and your excitement about the playoffs very quickly turns into you know oh my god what are we going to do the sky is falling so that line uh tells me we're probably not going to be seeing giant starters the entire game. And we likely are going to be seeing Jalen hurts. I, I would guess at least a half, but, but I don't know. I wouldn't be shocked to see, you know, whoever their backups are, because do you want really want, you know, a pissed off Eagles team who even during this losing, you know, two game losing streak, the longest losing streak of the year, by the way, guys, the listeners, thir you know, it could be as long as three. I've seen much worse, but back to back yes, to we the, have. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have this. This defensive front is get, still getting after the quarterback. So do you yep. want to put Daniel Jones in, in that kind of risk? It, it, we'll see. But uh, regardless, I think this Eagles team should still at home with everything to play for should should still lock up the one seed. No, and that's that's what I mean is like, uh, again, the number is telling you the Eagles are going to be the side. The, the, and, and, and for what it's worth, too, um, you know, this professional money that comes on openers, they were on the Eagles even with this huge line. So they were saying 13 and a half might not be enough points. I don't know if I believe that because even if it is the twos, it's still a divisional game. It's still right. a pride game. The Eagles did roll up on this team, so there's going to be bulletin board material for them coming in, regardless who it is. And if it's the twos, don't you want to potentially show, put something good on tape? So I don't think this is going to be a slam dunk roll on over for the Eagles game, but all we need them to do is win the game. 
And you're going to be playing against the Giants team who this season, they're the second best team at covering the spread. Only behind Cincinnati, the Giants all year long have been terrific as underdogs, 12 and four against the spread overall as underdogs. They're nine and two as away dogs. They're five and one, all of those numbers against the number. So if you think regardless who's playing, this Giants team is just going to come in and say, one seed, oh, you can have it. Like that SpongeBob episode. Oh, my ice cream cone, <laughs> you can take it. Like That's it's right. not going to happen, Eagles fans. That's so right. you're probably going to have to be a little bit sweaty. But I'm with you, Matt. I don't know. This would be an epic debacle of a choke job if the Eagles weren't able to get this job done against a team with quite literally nothing to play for. Can't improve their seating. Can't hurt their seating. I don't care who's in there. The Eagles have to win this football game. And um, if they don't, that's uh, that's an absolute black mark in the uh, in the early career of Nick Sirianni, in my opinion. I mean, this is a team who, in their stadium, the Eagles just like you said, rolled up on forty eight yeah. to twenty two, and the twenty two yeah. was really that was garbage time touchdowns, uh, and a couple of the Eagles were were backup. Where you know, Mac uh, Minshew had some ba- uh, mop up duty. You yep. got Gainwell in there scoring, so they're not going to love that. Uh, no, when when they're practicing this week. I think they'll remember that. Yeah. (laughs) So let's get into some of the uh, other NFL action this week. We got some really, really good games. We got a lot of TBDs on times uh, because a lot of the flexing and a lot of people are finishing against divisional rivals. I think everyone finishes against a divisional rival the way they set the season up now. This is exactly uh, what the NFL hoped for, Matt. When they when they, when they they said, hey, we're going to get a little bit of extra money at the end of the year. We're going to add another game on to the end of the season. We're going to make it 18 weeks of a season. This is exactly what the NFL wanted for. All kinds of playoff situations, all kinds of divisional game, three teams in play for the number one seed in the NFC. Like This is a dream for the NFL now that <laughs> college football is done only dance in town you ain't gotta be licking their chops heading into this weekend saying damn we know what we're doing a full weekend a full weekend oh, yeah. of football oh i'm gonna be glued to my tv like don't text me don't call me i'm not going to your your, your grandma's house i'm not going to dinner i'm gonna be locked to the tv bro that's it that's it that's right so uh browns and steelers so we started off talking about the steelers let's get back to the steelers for the other side of uh Yep. Pennsylvania. So I'm looking at this Browns game, man. And again, like I, I run down all of these games each and every week with what I do with the company I work with for wager talk. We're doing content all week long, looking at these games and the Browns finally looked decent last week. Like Watson actually didn't look awful on, on, on right. Sunday, but right. uh, isn't that the most Browns thing ever, Matt, that they finally don't look awful now that their season's over. Like, like what else is new? Like, <laughs> Yeah, the Browns have nothing to play for, and now they're playing spoilers. Whereas this Steelers team, they, after being on life support, you know, TJ Watt comes back, and now they're rolling. So they're looking to keep their faint playoff hopes alive. It comes down in this game, um, motivation. Like, like we know that the Steelers are going to be up for this game. We know that the Steelers, they're like, hey, let's win one for the Gipper. You know, we're going to get Mike Tomlin, make sure that he stays over 500 on the year plus the fact that we could potentially still sneak in the back door for the playoffs, it's do the Browns care about playing spoiler? You know what I mean? Like if I had Biff's Almanac or if I had a crystal ball, I could tell you who's going to win this game. I could tell you who's going to cover this game, but I'm not in that Browns locker room. And the key factor in this game is, are the Browns going to be up to play spoiler for this game? If they're not, Steelers are the right side slam dunk. But if the Browns do want to, you know, put a little stamp on the end of the season, give themselves something to feel good about, could be a, a Browns, you know, cover spot or even a potential win outright. But um, without knowing that, man, the only way I can look towards is the yellow and black. Same. And also, I'll just, I just got to point this out bad management from the Browns uh, leadership to, to, yeah. to, to lose to lose Kareem Hunt, get nothing for him, and miss the playoffs. It's just a bad move. They could have got a they could have got some really desperate team to give up a second, yep. give up somebody who's actually good, has a good future. They they're gonna lose him for nothing because they didn't pay him. They he asked for a trade, they didn't give it to him, made him come back and play. You go and miss the playoffs. It's Cleveland. Bye bye, Dude. Kareem Hunt. <laughs> yeah, like, 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 I couldn't have said it any better myself. And, and like, sorry <laughs> to your listeners that are in Cleveland, yeah. but like, water is wet and the Browns management stays screwing up. 
Like, like, That's like right. just rinse, wash, repeat. If there is any situation that that, that uh, cohort of people can bungle, uh, they will do just that. So <laughs> I had the same thought, like, how do you fumble that back? Cause you could have got some, some decent, uh, decent yes. market support for Kareem hunt. But um, I don't know what they were doing on that one. Just Brown's going to Brown brother. That's right. That's right. Cowboys at commanders. Talk about spoilers. Talk about interesting games. Yeah, talk about spoilers. Well, spoiler alert, big time game. Carson Wentz shits the bed. Sorry, you know, sorry you got to bleep, bleep that out there. Bro. No, I, but, I uh, might not. Yeah, yeah, you know, because it's because that's the fact. You know, like, maybe we'll bleep it out if it weren't so damn true. But we that's saw right. the, the Wentz that we knew and loved that's in a must-win game. Zero we touchdowns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, did, we didn't love him. But that was the funny thing. Why I actually thought if there was ever chance for Carson Wentz to dispel just the stark drop that's happened in his career, like just that's right. I, I, it's, I'm hard pressed to think of a absolute devolvement of a career that oh we have gosh. seen in recent NFL history, even all time NFL history from a guy who was an MVP quality player in 2017. He gets injured and Matt, like he can't play football anymore, man. Like, I don't know what happened to him. Cause like there were even little it's flashes. Up here. It's, 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 up. it's the yips, but it's the yips that, that keep on giving. Like he just can't, I, I think he hates football. Like I truly <laughs> think like he does not want to play football anymore. I think, I think the injury that screwed him up more wasn't the knee injury. I think it was that playoff game that he got knocked out against the, uh, um, against the yeah. Seahawks. Remember yeah. that where, 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 you know, that dirty early, hit. Clowning. Yeah, the dirty hit goes to the back of his helmet, and there were reports that you know he was down in the locker room. He wasn't even able to recognize his wife, his wife when she came down Ooh. to the locker room. So I feel like more than anything, like yeah, we joke about it, and whatever. Like I personally feel bad for the guy because mm. you know it, it was just this stark devolvement of a career. Oh and now, as far as this game goes, you know, I'll get off my soapbox about Carson Wentz um, because I, I I went down with the ship, man. I was I was one of those Wentz You're troopers. A Carson I was, guy. I was yeah. I was like I was like uh, like Ike Reese. I was like let the Bronco buck uh, until he I believe that too <laughs> until he couldn't buck no more, man. So like I still I'm a little jaded about him making me look foolish because like I pride myself <laughs> on my football takes and uh, and defending Carson Wentz way past when I should have um, is is one of the black marks on my career. Career that, yeah. I, that I'll have, <laughs> I'll have forever, yeah. man. So, 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 getting off of that soapbox and just as far as this game goes, um, yes, there's injury concerns for Dak here, but the Cowboys thought initially this game wasn't going to mean anything, and now all of a sudden, because of just the craziness of the NFC, they're in play for the one seed this week. So, yeah, there's injury concerns for Dak, but I don't know what you think. There's, there's, I'm not going to bet this game, but there's no way that you could talk me into, oh, you know, commanders play spoiler here. Like, I, I don't see a game script that turns into anything but a Dallas road win here. I, I don't know what your thoughts are about that. I And I'm going to call this early. It is timestamp. Again, it is Monday. Cowboys 55, commanders 13. They are about oh, to God. roll into D.C. and roll over the commanders. Not so close. I'm alt lining this up is what you're saying. Like whatever the line is, forget it. Just like I'm gonna lay Cowboys minus twenty at like plus seven hundred. Yes, set. Yes, set it up. <laughs> That's what's about to happen. And the Eagles. Matt, better I'm gonna win. send you a late Christmas present once I get that cash. I, I got you. You just shoot me your address. I got you on that one. <laughs> if you do it, I got you. you know, I'll send it over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what about the uh, the other NFC East battle? We we I think I think I know what you're saying, but give me a score prediction for the Giants and Eagles. Yeah, I, and again, I think this game's going to be closer than people do think. Um, we talked about this game kind of at length, but uh, just to circle kind of back, odds makers they clearly think that this is a slam dunk Eagles spot. Not only do they think that the sharp pro betters too, too. Eagles opened as thirteen point favorite. Second that that came out, pro betters walked up to the counter and they said, "No, that's not enough." So we're looking at fourteen point favorites. Mm. Looks like it's going to climb even higher. Um, so I don't, I don't think Matt they're going to cover that number. I don't think they need to cover that number. I think. This team comes into this game saying, let's win this. Let's find a way to win it. So um, NFC's battle, not many starters potentially playing for the Giants. Let's just hope that the Eagles can get out of this mess. Um, maybe they win by a touchdown. Let's call it, what, uh, 
ugly game, 24-17, something like that. Eagles win, maybe win by a touchdown or maybe win by a field goal. I don't care how they win, Matt. Just please win the game. Because if they don't get the one seed, Matt, we are in trouble in the playoffs. We are in big-time trouble if they don't have a week to lick their wounds. I, 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 it, I and then they got to play do. Tom. Yeah. And then they got oh go, go to go to go to Tampa Bay, back to Tampa Bay. <laughs> I can't take that. I, if they end up as the five seed, Matt, I, I'm 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 becoming a Steelers fan. I can't I can't I can't I can't do it, bro. I can't do it. The opposite of grease the polls. Whatever the opposite yeah, of grease yeah, the polls. Yeah, whatever whatever Philly. the opposite of grease the polls is, like 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 at get the fire department on standby because it's gonna get ugly in Philadelphia. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 bad things happen in Philadelphia. Bad things uh, if uh, if if they don't end up with this one seed, bro. And the people who listen to this just to, uh, you know, to, to, to chronicle my, my S talking about the Eagles, they are enjoying this right now because this is uh this is real agony. I did not have a good time. No, it's sheer pain. Off. It's sheer pain, dude. Like we, we, we were victory lapping. Like, like this reminds me a lot of uh, the Chip Kelly year when we were five and one to start oh. the year and then we missed the playoffs. Like, like, the I'm Sanchez. sorry to bring that up. I should have said, I should have sent a trigger warning out uh, before I brought that up. Yes. But uh, yeah, they, it, it's starting to give me shades of that, man. This would be an epic collapse. Eight. No, you know, one seed basically signed, sealed, delivered, just got to win a couple down. Like just beat the giants, please just beat the giants. That's all we need. That's all we ask for. Another really interesting one that's going to have people sweating is Lions and Packers. Oh. There's a lot on the line in that one. What are you What are you thinking about that? I mean, Matt, to me, this is this is the battle of the two teams that nobody wants to see in the playoffs, right? Like, that's right. I I, I don't I don't want to see a Lions team that's got nothing to lose that has Dan Campbell ready to have these dudes <laughs> run through a wall every single who might every actually single- bite somebody. No, no, like that's what he, like he literally says like I don't care if you beat us we're going to bite your ankles. Like bro, that's that's like that's psychosis that you can't teach. And like these that's players right. eat it up, man. Like I love yeah. me some Dan Campbell. And then with this Packers team, man, they were dead in the water. Like it looked like Rodgers wasn't only coming back from an ayahuasca trip. It looked like he was actively tripping on ayahuasca yes. while playing yes. in these games, yes. bro. Yes. Like, yes. like he was God awful. And I don't know if they all took a trip to the desert and got, you know, yeah. all, all zend up together or, yeah. or what it was. Um, yep. Because dude, they have we got nothing to lose. Daunting. Like, Hey, just yeah. come with the Aaron's yeah, like, just, y'all come on, man. The season's like, over. Let's go yeah. try it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's like, I got that ex-girlfriend who like I said that yeah. she identifies as a witch and whatever. She can like put a hex on all these teams that we're playing. Like I can still call her up. I'll, I'll find you guys, get you in touch with my shaman, all that good stuff. And now yeah. they have just looked daunting, dude. Like, like I think honestly the best way to bet this game and it might not be, you know, like, the greatest like positive expected value. But I think both of these teams, whoever is able to sneak in, they're going to be coming in hot. They're going to be coming in relatively healthy. Um, I probably sprinkle on whoever wins this game to win the entire NFC. Cause you're going to get a really wow. good price on it. Um, and and I'm, again, I'm not saying like, Oh, the lions will shock the world. I think that's kind of giving away that. I think the Packers win this game. You know what I mean? Okay. So I, I would want to grab them now um, because I, I think, this team, nobody wants them coming to their house, whoever wins this game, because you're going to get your ankles bit or you're going to get an Aaron Rodgers who who has transcended time and reality 12 times over. So so Seattle and Detroit are eliminated. Uh, that That's what happens if Green Bay wins. Yeah, so that that's that that's the thing. Um, because I know that we were gonna get into it, and it's kind of a natural segue, just like who ends up with this last spot in the NFC. You know what I mean? Like I I think I, I think it has to be the Packers. Like credit to what the Seahawks did. Dude, the Seahawks, I think their total wins on the season was like four or something like that. Like before mm-hmm. the season, it was projected for them to win four yep. games. Like everyone was saying, oh my right. God, they're gonna be awful. And it turns out all they needed to do was get the weirdest dude in America, Russell Wilson, off their <laughs> team. Like, like they were just yep. like, bro, we can't. We can't cringe in the locker room any longer with Russell Wilson and his corny pregame speeches. So, like, they got him out, and then who who would have known that by 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 letting Russell cook, all they needed to do was get his ass out the kitchen because then Gino right. started cooking. So, if they're able to do it, that's impressive. Crazy. I think I think that's probably the longest shot. I think it's Lions or Packers, but for the Packers, 
Um, three straight wins for them. And, and, and last this past Sunday, they emphatically answer the question that people have asked all year, you know, how for real are the Vikings? Packers just told nah. you all these people who are saying they were frauds are starting to look a little right. 41-17, most complete game they played all year. And they are the one team out of those three that you mentioned that it's just winning in. Like, they don't have to be scoreboard watching. They don't have to worry about what happens in the other game across town. All the Packers have to do is beat their in-division rival, the Lions, who they have some motivation after they lost to the Lions the last time out. Aaron Rodgers throws a back-breaking pick. So mm -hmm. I, I think Packers win this game, and if Packers get into and are live, um, I think they can make some noise in the NFC. So I'm betting the Packers today on Monday with us recording, Matt. Give me the Packers plus 1,500 to win the NFC. I think I think that'd be a live ticket if they're able to break down the party here. This is how Aaron did it last time. He got that yep. last playoff. He got that last playoff spot. Went in as underdog each time and cooked everybody. Yep. I mean, and, and, and <laughs> him as a him as a favorite, and like he doesn't have to worry about all the pressure. Like, oh, the Packers are going to choke again. Like. They have already in the mind of everybody choked this season away. So now Aaron Rodgers gets to be in an underdog role that he never really gets to be in. Um, dude, give me that live ticket, 15 to one all day long. If if he did that, let's just go there hypothetically. Aaron Rodgers wins this year's Super Bowl. There will be there will be a large segment of the NFL population who will say he's the GOAT. And 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 they'll have some reasons to say I don't I wouldn't agree, but there'll be people you can't argue off of that list. Oh, a thousand percent, a, th a thousand percent. Like like, and you know the hot takes will be coming fast and furious. Now again, I don't know if they're able to get it done because I think I think whoever comes out of the AFC is probably going to be winning the Super Bowl this year. I, I mean, I think there is just such an incredible top heavy nature in the AFC where those top three teams, man, I, I would not want to see them on any Sunday, even their worst Sunday. So that's why I don't know if I'm going to be, um, you know, going crazy and, and betting any NFC team to be winning the Super Bowl, but being able to get the Packers just to win the conference, I, I don't think it's an awful bet. And then uh, I look forward to Skip Bayless and his, uh, his, his being on full tilt mode when uh, when he has to explain away to Shanny uh, about, you know, oh, my God, Tom Brady lost in the playoffs to Aaron Rodgers. You know, it, it'll be interesting narratives for the armchair quarterbacks. That's for sure. Ooh. Absolutely. And, and for the people who listen tonight uh, there before the Monday night game, you got a big one uh, again, time I already timestamped this for y'all Bengals at uh, Buffalo bills. No, no, it's bills at Bengals, at Buffalo, correct? but Buffalo is the favorite, which is, which is crazy. Well, who you got there? Oh man. The, here's the thing is this thing was sitting basically at, pick them at one all week long and now Monday and I'll keep it short since you know some of your listeners who are grabbing the episode a little bit later in the week um, you can either say wow this guy really knew what he was talking about or he has no <laughs> clue what he's talking about so uh, so always you know reach out uh, you know uh, whether you're complimenting or dragging me at newbie talks on the socials I, I welcome them all um, but now on Monday here, man, money is just pouring in on the Bills. So Bills are up to two and a half point favorites on the road. You've heard the stat probably all week long. The Bengals coming into this game 20 and three against the spread run that they're on with Joe Burrow under center. They've covered 20 games only, mm. failed to cover three games. He's a money-making machine, bro. Oh. So so um, I, I can only look towards the Bengals. I, I know that all the sharp money is coming in. They're all looking at the Bills. Um, I just think there's there's something special. I know they lost their right tackle. I think Joe Burrow has showed you time and time again since that final season at LSU. Like, he's the truth, man. Like, everybody makes that joke. Like, he's him. Joe Burrow is. is him, dude. Like, he, he has is. no offensive line and is still able to cover all these games, win all these games. Now he gets to be a home underdog um, I can only look towards Joe Burrow in this game, but uh, I know I've kind of been an anti-Bill detractor all year long, so maybe this is finally the spot I get some egg on my face, Matt. I look forward to some of your listeners chirping me on Twitter. I, I, I look forward to that. Burrow is a last of a dying breed of, of those true kind of pocket quarterbacks. I love He's it. sick. Yeah. That, that's, what I, that's what I mean. Like, he, he reminds me that, like, oh – 
So you can still do it without legs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. I personally love that the NFL is going the way of you need like an athletic quarterback who's That's able right. to sling the rock downfield. Um, but you need to be able to have your legs for just what the NFL is becoming. Joe Burrow, not like, like here's the thing. It's like, I can't even quite call him a pocket passer. Cause the dude has no pocket to pass in. Like, yeah, like, he right. got, like he got like <laughs> these linemen falling down around him and he's just, ah, screw it. Chase open down there somewhere. Just like chucking yep. it up. Like it's, it's, it's unreal what he's been able to do, man. I, I think he is just an absolute treat to watch. He's fun. He's likable. Every time I see him chiefing on a cigar, I'm like, that's the coolest dude I've ever seen in my life. He walks off the bus with drip, chains on, you know, fur jackets. Like, I, I'm a card carrying member of the Joe Burrow Society, as you can probably Absolutely. <laughs> so what are you working on uh, this week for Wager Talk for the folks who, who do listen to it right away? And what can they look forward to from you, man? Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Again, Matt, anytime you need a guest, would love to come on here, bro. You do a terrific job with this Thank show. You. People I gotta, that. if you guys like what Matt's doing, the best way you can help him out, share it. You know, throw it in your throw it in your Twitter timeline, throw it up on Instagram. Honorable mention 2023 gonna be the year of honorable mention, <laughs> baby. So appreciate if you like that. what if you like what Matt is doing, definitely share it. And if you like um, you know, the guest that he brings on, drop us all a follow. You can hit me up yes, at Newbie please. Talks. N-E-U-B-Y-T-A-L-K-S. I love going back and forth with people. DMs always wide open if you want to talk some betting, you want to talk. I also throw down. You can follow me on all different kinds of socials. I love cooking. So if you want to see some high-level cooking videos, bro, head on over to TikTok at yeah. Newbie Talks. Your mouth will nice. be salivating. I got you. <laughs> and uh, you can always catch me live each and every Tuesday and Thursday at 2.30 Eastern on the Wager Talk TV YouTube channel. I host a show there called Sports Memo Today. We get you actionable info in 30 minutes or less. As you know, and as you could probably tell from the episode, I stay true to the at. Newbie talks, and this mother effer can talk. That's all I do, bro. <laughs> Always take the over when I'm going to be a guest on the show. But this was awesome, man. Thank you so Thank much you, for man. having me on, man. Thank you so much. And of course, y'all can follow me. It's P-O-L-I-T-I-D-O-P-E. Uh, I also mentioned Pod over on Twitter. But thank you all so much, and I'll see you soon.